Hi everybody, Kai Waza with you, and today uh, I am doing a video response, or I guess I should say it's like a video contest entry to uh, someone I subscribe to, Branton Young, uh, is, is having a 200 subscribers competition, and uh, I thought I would enter it, not you know even as much for the contest as just I really like the question uh, that he asks, and something immediately came to my mind, and I just would like to share it. Uh, his question that he wants to know uh, from us is what is our favorite record label? So that means like physically the label itself, which company is, is our favorite record label? And or what is our favorite record label in terms of uh, their output or their artists or whatever? Which label do we kind of gravitate towards? So. I'm going to actually answer both uh, questions with one answer, uh, which is 49th State Hawaii Records. And I'm sure you don't know anything about them, most of you. Why would you? Uh, so let me tell you just a little bit about them. So of course, first off, I'm sure you're wondering, isn't Hawaii the 50th state? Yes, it is. Uh, 49th State Records was started in 1948 by George Ching, uh, who owned a record store and it only operated for 10 years until 1958. Hawaii actually became a state in 1959. Uh, through that period, everybody thought Hawaii would be the 49th state because at the time there were only 48 states and that was the assumption. So his record company was kind of like, you know, thinking into the future and calling itself 49th state Hawaii records. I mean, history played a joke on them because uh, as we know, Alaska actually surprisingly and unexpectedly uh, got admitted first and Hawaii came second. So Hawaii ended up actually being the 50th state. So the name itself, 49th State Records, is sort of an uh, interesting historical uh, thing. Um, I love their record labels. And uh, before we go any further, uh, they did three labels, one which was kind of plain and then the other two, the two I'll show you, are Hula Girl labels. I'm not sure which one came first and second, uh, but they did two different labels that are just, to me, the word is iconic, and that's the word I use for the entire 49th State Hawaii Record Company from beginning to end. It is iconic 1950s Hawaii imagery. Uh, and let me show you the two uh, Hula Girl labels from 49th State Hawaii. Love those labels. And then they also did uh, the same labels on 45s. Um, I don't know if you can really see that, but. Um, and they did great sleeves for their 45s too uh, that advertised their other records. So I just love these guys. Let me tell you just a little bit about them. Um, why they're so iconic to me. They, they were only in operation for 10 years and they had an incredible output during that time period. They just recorded so many things. Now, what's controversial, interesting, whatever about this label, they were non-union. So uh, what ended up happening is that a lot of the musicians, they were not well-known people. Um, they were not particularly well rehearsed even and many many of the recordings were actually made in people's living rooms so the production values on 49 state records are not quite what they were on other labels here in hawaii at the time like waikiki records and trade wind records were doing very good quality uh, production value wise 49 state is a little lacking in that area but there were some people like Genoa Keave who recorded with them early and uh, went on to great fame on her own so there are some early recordings by people that became uh, well known later on but I love them because uh, the, the packaging is iconic uh, and the music is very iconic his whole idea with this label was to record uh, 45s, what they really did the most of. They did hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of 45 releases of all kinds of Hawaiian songs geared toward the hula market. Their idea was like to, that 
people learning hula, especially tourists, uh, could learn songs, buy the 45, take it home, and then also hula studios here. Then what they did is they took a lot of these 45s and they repackaged them into LPs that weren't related. I mean, like they had necessarily no theme or anything, but they just uh, would you know, put together some of the 45s, usually one side vocals and one side instrumentals. Uh, and I love the labeling to me that they did on all these records. A lot of them were like just a bl white, a block, two blo you know, two blocks, a block picture and a block picture maybe of the artist. Not all of them were like that, but uh, most of them were like that. And I, the imagery, the photographs they used, the bright colors, um, is very iconic. 1950s Hawaii and uh, really not just for me but for a lot of people kind of represents uh, Hawaii during that time period and the the imagery uh, where is there's one in particular it's amazing that this even got through well, let me find it okay here we go look at this one I mean uh, how did this one ever make it through the censors? I mean, this was the 1950s, and we have actual, you know, breast exposure there. Uh, but these records just scream 1950s Hawaii, and they are very collectible here. Now, and I know the mainland, once in a while, when I used to live in Oregon, I would see them sometimes really cheap. I got some sealed for 50 cents or like for in the dollar bin. But if uh, anybody knows what they are, they're very expensive. In Hawaii, you find these records going for like 50, 60 dollars and more because um, they're very, very collectible. And there's still a lot of 45s, even way after they went out of production. When I moved here in 1981, they had been out of production since 1958. Um, they were still selling 49th State records and the record stores like they still had them and they still had a wall with the 45 singles of a lot of the uh 49th state you know hula songs that they were selling so very iconic um, i love them um, my grandfather had some in pennsylvania when i was a kid that was where i was first exposed to them and i they were very iconic to me then the imagery so i definitely think 49th state hawaii for me is uh, my favorite record label in terms of the, the label itself. I love the label and in terms of as a label, you know, conceptually what they were doing and how they presented themselves. Uh, love it. And I should mention also, I forgot to mention, we've been listening to some uh, 49 State Hawaii records in the background. Great instrumental stuff. Uh, Benjamin Rogers, a uh, very iconic steel guitar, the vibes. It's a very 1950 sound. And also they put together some other singles on 10 inch long play records, which I forgot to show you this one, which also were very iconically <laughs> packaged and called souvenir songs. And there's like, I don't know how many, like 50 or 60 volumes of these that they put out that are just different uh, 45s put together. So 49 State Hawaii gets my vote for sure. And uh, congratulations to Bratton Young for 200 subscribers. And if you haven't checked out his uh, channel, please do. Um, he collects a lot of different kind of recordings and kind of is into some of the dollar bins and some of the weird and wacky stuff, which I like too. So uh, that's my entry, 49 State.